Welcome to Canberra, known for their aggressive road signs. Drink, drive, die in a ditch. Alcohol plus speed, dead ahead. Drive and text, you be next. We didn't visit just for the signs and backward sentences, looking at you lane one form. Being just three hours away from Sydney, we decided to explore the laid-back Australian capital for a week. Stay tuned to see what Canberra has to offer, including a story where I got attacked by a magpie. Located somewhere between Sydney and Melbourne, Canberra is home to more than 400,000 inhabitants. This is where you'll find the parliament, embassies, museums, and many federal government institutions. Looking carefully at a map of the city, you will notice excessive use of symmetry, circles, and straight lines. Canberra is a planned city, meaning it's specifically designed and built to be a capital. That's why you'll see long, straight roads and huge roundabouts. Especially this one in the city centre, or the CBD as the Aussies call it. Why do I have to walk along this hexagon when I want to cross straight through the city? Don't worry, the questionable urban planning didn't ruin our trip. I had never been to a planned capital before, as I'm used to the largest city in the country being the capital. Seeing so many institutions, landmarks and embassies all in one place was interesting. There are heaps of activities to do, such as visiting the city, go for a guided tour at the Australian Parliament, check out the weekly markets, go hiking, or even attend the festivals arranged by the embassies. We visited the Thai Embassy for their festival. Naturally, I had to stop by the Norwegian Embassy on the way, only to be severely disappointed when it looked like army barracks. A huge contrast to, say, the Japanese Embassy. But this is not a top 10 embassy video. Instead, here's a highlight of three things to do in Canberra. I was pleasantly surprised by the amount of bicycle infrastructure, even stretching out to the suburbs. We were able to loan a bike from my partner's local friends. Since it didn't fit in our car, I had to ride the 16 kilometers down to the city. Before I started pedaling, I was advised to wear sunglasses. You know, just in case the magpies attack you. I had heard of the infamous magpie swoop on cyclists, but I had never experienced it myself. Turns out, I didn't have to wait for too long. Just four minutes into the journey, I noticed a shadow of a bird hovering above me. I don't think I've ever pedaled that fast in my life before. Luckily, it didn't go for my eyes, but it was still a scary experience. What felt like a minute was probably just 15 seconds in real life. Up next, we decided to cycle a 17km loop around Lake Burley Griffin, an artificial lake named after the American architect who designed the city. Apart from now being afraid of every magpie I spotted while cycling, it was a lovely ride indeed. There are bike paths along the whole route, almost completely separated by car traffic. I'd recommend cycling at a leisurely pace, as there are plenty of photo opportunities. Just skip cooking anything on this barbecue in particular. After a while, we spotted something familiar. I had never seen so many kangaroos all in the same spot. Who knew they were into golfing? I think someone's tired, so let's move on to an indoor activity. Going back to our map, you might notice a deliberately shaped triangle. That's the parliamentary triangle, containing some of Australia's most significant buildings and monuments. Most of them are located here. If we include this circle with the parliaments, we get a keyhole. Burley Griffin sure loved his geometric shapes and symbolisms. Naturally, this part of Canberra has museums worth checking out. One highlight was the Old Parliament, which was in use from 1927 to 1988. You don't have to be into politics to find it interesting. What captivated me were the attention to details. It probably felt like travelling back in time, seeing how everyone worked in a different era. We also found out that my partner would become the next Prime Minister. Stay tuned, folks. Located just outside the keyhole, I'd also recommend going to the National Museum of Australia. As a foreigner, it was nice learning more about Australian and Aboriginal history. Mm -hmm. 
Visit the capital during springtime and you will be bombarded with flowers. There are so many cherry blossoms dying to be photographed. The annual event Floriad was on during our stay. It's heavily marketed with heaps of flowers, live music and attractions. It felt a bit too commercialized for our liking, especially with speakers hung in trees replicating bird sounds. Definitely a family-friendly event, but don't make it your sole reason to visit Canberra. However, I would recommend checking out the National Arboretum, Arbor Arboretum. Arboretum for their bonsai collection. I haven't talked much about the city itself. It's a compact city with entertainment, restaurants and street art. Ready? Ready? Picture. <laughs> you can get anywhere on foot or pedals, you just have to avoid this annoying roundabout. There's a strong sense of national and international pride in Canberra. Everything feels grand with huge buildings, monuments and symbolic urban planning. Even the suburbs are kinda nice with the bicycle infrastructure and these iconic bus shelters. If you're staying in Sydney and want a weekend trip to a smaller city, Canberra has lots to offer. The capital is reachable by car, bus, train or plane. Just be careful if you're driving. People die on Australian capital territory roads. 